drama reigned free at Santa Anita as an unbelievable day of stakes action highlighted a week full of memorable moments across the racing world. And Todd Pletcher, their third stakes win on the card as Stay Thirsty wins the Gotham. She was there, and it was just really special to share that with her. But, yeah, we have a special spot for him. Is digging deep. Zazu and Joe Al Rosario closing on the outside. Turbulence descent going to get there. Turbulence descent in a thriller. One of the heads. Zazu was closing the gap with each and every stride. Moose is after twice over. Twice over a neck in front. Moose is trying, but he won't catch twice over. Boys, we're going to be here for a little while while they figure out what has actually happened here. I'm Scott Hazelton here to catch you up on the week at HRTV. Big Cap Day at Santa Anita Park did not fail to live up to expectations as one of the most contentious endings seen all year took place in the $750,000 Grade 1 race. Big Cap Day on Saturday. Yes. That's the theme of the bullet drill. Okay. Biggest Big Cap price in its history as far as winners. I don't think it was martial law, but he paid over $100. He did. It was that. 50 to 1. 50 to 1. Uh, if he wasn't the biggest one, I'm not sure who was. 1941, I know. You were there. Oh, no, I wasn't. Bayview at 58 to 1 upset the Big Cap field. How about the smallest Big Cap price? I would have th said I would have spectacular so bid. I would have thought so as well. But he's not, he wasn't. 40 yeah. cents to the dollar, 1961. Prove it. Well, he was in a uh, uh, entry, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. forty was, cents. Was there, I was there. That I was there. You were there, way up there in the corner. There, 61, I, I was, was twelve years away from being around. But I was here. And how about the biggest big cap handle for a single race? One race. It's mm. the biggest handle. Well, I know they had eighty-six thousand here in eighty-six. That's what. No he, betting money. No, I, I know that. Million. I know that, and that was Lord at War. It was a big, like, three-day kick right picks. So I would say that, maybe that race. No? Uh, four that? years later, 1990, okay. General Challenge. Really? 3.6 okay. million plus All right. on just one well, race. They should send it in on Saturday. You think Twirling Candy will have $3.6 million to win on a loan? I don't think so, but <laughs> I, I think he's going to win. The first big cap was run in 1935, won by Asuka, Spanish for sugar. Sweet for anyone who bet him at 12 to 1, sour for his handlers. He would prove uncatchable both during and after the race. Southern California racing would never be the same. Over the decades, the Big Cap has become and remained one of America's most celebrated horse racing events. From Seabiscuit's Hollywood ending triumph in 1940 to the first two-time Big Cap winner John Henry in the early 80s. And with the turn of the millennium, arrived a pair of back-to-back -back big cap champions. And Milwaukee Brew and Kent DeSorbo flying home to win the big cap. Back-to-back -back wins for Milwaukee Brew over Congaree. And Corey Nakatani have won the big cap, but Lava Man is too good. Today, the next chapter. And all eyes are on Bob Baffert, essentially running a relay team, headlined by his latest arrival, second in the Preakness, third in the Belmont. But somehow, first dude still has just one win on his resume. Patty Gallagher dreamed of winning this race with his mentor and longtime friend, Bill Shoemaker. They won the Strube in 94 with Diazzo, and the big cap was next. But it was not to be. 19 years later, Gallagher is back with another shot at big cap immortality. Aggie Engineer and Joe Telemo romp in the San Pasquales. It's been a banner meet for trainer John Sadler, and today he saddles two horses, the determined winner of the San Antonio and the horse many feel could be the best in the country. Loaded with talent, he's lost only once. His temperament, unpredictable. When focused, he's unstoppable. Trolling Candy, the son of Candy Wright, in a scintillating performance in the Stroop. Glory and lasting fame await today's winner, an American classic at the classic American distance. Spectacular bid, winning the big cap. Marshall Law is now, it's affirmed. John Henry, bomb away. This hell drops over the big cap. The grade one Santa Anita handicap today at Santa Anita. Feel the
for the Santa Anita Handicap sent on their way. Game on dude broke smoothly from the outside gate. Heads a turn for home in the big one. Setsuko on the outside. Twirling candy. Oh, a lot of bumping going on. Game on dude shifted out. Game on dude goes on. Setsuko. Quindici man. Twirling candy can find no more. And it's Setsuko in full flight. Game on dude on the inside. Quindici man flying late. Setsuko. Game on dude. So close. Maybe game on dude. But it's so close. Watch this bump The right drama here. didn't end in the winner's circle. Here's some was, of the uh, post-race uh, coverage so seen on HRTV. I'm to explain as slowly as I can so you understand. I don't know if Twirling Candy came out and made the initial contact with Setsuko or Setsuko came in, but I do know one thing for sure, that the winner uh, came out, game on dude, and made tre tremendous contact. Boys, we're gonna be here for a little while while they figure out what has actually happened here. You know, Lafitte, if they can take Perot down, they can take it's this. It's 1982 all over again. I know. Who's the culprit? <clears throat> well, let's just watch this uh, the best that we can as they turn in to the stretch here. You're going to see contact initially between uh, Setsuko and right here, it looked like to me, Candy, uh, Twirly mm. Candy uh. came out and made the contact with Setsuko, and after watching this, I'm not so sure that Twirling Candy didn't create his own problems by coming in and, and hitting uh, uh, Game On Dude. It has okay. just been announced, no change. No change, Game On Dude, the winner of the 2011 Santa Anita Handicap, 11, 6, 7, 1. Keep the camera on him for the Put reaction. Put it on. Okay. Okay. Is that a difficult thing when, when a horse hits the back end of a horse. It seems like that's always difficult to see. It's, it's very difficult, and I think it actually makes it appear as if the inside horse is coming out mm -hmm. when that's not what happened. Unfortunately then, when you show it to 30,000 people or however many have here today, you know, who don't get that nuance, it just looks like the inside horse is coming out and wiped everybody out. Unfortunately, we have to go by, you know, what we you know, know or believe happened. You seemed defeated. What were you, what was your, what was going through your mind, and let's not pay much attention to this, what was going through your mind as these stewards were taking a look at the, at the reel? Just trying to be calm, because you know how horse racing, it could go either way, and I think the stewards made a really good decision, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, I'm really happy about it, and I think my horse ran amazing. Take me through the trip. I had a great trip, and um, you know, Bob and I talked before the race, I watched all the replays on the horse, I was, you know, excited to ride him. On the backside, a couple of the horses came up beside him, and he was pretty game and very aggressive. Um, but then he raided well too, so he was just awesome. His, he just he moves well and a gritty horse because he came back on when I asked him to. Get him left-handed. Now here's what the incident happens. He hey. looks like he comes out, but then you're telling us, and you certainly politics as well on the phone that no, it was Twirling Candy who kind of came in. Well, if you see, I hit him earlier left, and he doesn't. He doesn't move, the horse is straight as an arrow. He, he was awesome and, and just straight. I was having no problem with him. And when I was in the race, and if you've ever had someone kind of trip you from behind, I felt like I got bumped and I like never, like I could just tell it had nothing to do with me. So I said, you know, bear down, keep riding. And then once we, you know, got past the wire, I came back to the, to see, you know, Bob and everybody. And, and I said, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. You know, I know we're gonna be fine, we're gonna be fine. And then. Then it was a long time, and then I talked to the stewards, and I told them like that I was straight, I had no problem, and um, you know it was in fact I felt like I got hit first, right. and I lost all my balance because he had you know tipped me from right. behind right. as I was in mid, you know I was in motion. Mm -hmm. Is this something you went to sleep thinking about last night? No, oh, absolutely. I mean, this is I mean it's a, one of the biggest races in California of the year, and you hate for it to end in the steward stand. I mean, it's just not. You know, it's not something stewards look forward to or want. I mean, some there's, sometimes there's a popular sort of opinion that we like to be involved, but that couldn't be farthest from the truth, especially in a big race like this. Saturday also honored legendary track figure Frank Kilrow in the Kilrow Mile at Santa Anita Park. There has never been a man in the history of racing who has been more of a credit to his profession than Jim Kilrow, Bill Shoemaker. It is said that genius is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. 
along those lines. If the goals of racing are to be attained and equally important, maintained, it will only be because of hard work by dedicated people. Jimmy Kilrow is such a man. Ogden Mills Phipps. Jimmy Kilrow and I have been friends and associates for many years. He has done more overall for Southern California racing than anyone in my time. Charlie Whittingham. I admire Jimmy as a true professional, a giant in his field. More important, I admire him as a friend and associate. I constantly find enjoyment in his sharp wit and his tremendous capacity to make his point with humor. And always on mark. Robert P. Stroop. Fluke along the inside, Geronimo. Time's gone by, and Cora Cortado in the white cap is exploding. Cora Cortado, Fluke on the inside, Fluke, Cora Cortado, very close. Fluke, maybe, you know. I have a little spin in the race, but I, you know, I don't, I don't try to use it too much. You know, we have a plan already, so I knew, you know, there's going to be a lot of speed. So I just figured out, you know, my race in the first turn, and when I get my first, you know, my, my. In the first time I get my good position, you know, I stay on the rail a little bit, you know, in way, you know, and when I see uh, the other horses, you know, in the 3A, you know, they look like coming out, you know, logging out a little bit, so I always get the opportunity to come for the rail, and my whole he showed me a big kick. I'm glad to run for Mr. Humberto, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Saturday was also the Clockers Corner handicap from Santa Anita. Four for five on that downhill strip. What makes her so effective? She's just a special horse, you know. She's got, she's got a ton of ability and, and a ton of uh, heart. So hopefully, uh, you know, she has some racing luck and everything goes well. How is she trained coming into this? She's trained good. We've uh, had to sort of uh, make some adjustments with the weather and, and pick a different couple of different races out for uh, because races came off the turf. So this is just kind of where we wound up. But she seems like she's doing really well. And Unzeppi's having to pull out all stops now just in front Reaver is top broken dreams on the inside but unzip me showed her fast today a very valiant win 2010 big cap winner misremembered returned in style in Sunday's feature but misremembered in front with a 16th to go and they would need to sprout wings to get misremembered what a stylish performance comes home just like an exercise work here misremembered in a canter I think, it, I think it's been one year from today that he that he ran in the big cap so we've been waiting for this and happy as can be jill this is one of your favorite horses you go to the barn you pet him how are you feeling well these horses become a part of who you are. I mean, they become a part of your life and where you are in your life at that time. And he's just brought so much happiness to us. And he's been such a part of many great memories. Next on Rewind. It's stay thirsty, and this will cap a big day for Ramon Dominguez and Todd Pletcher. When I look back, I know she was right behind me, so I had to push the button. And she responds just nicely. And uh, she made the shows the perfect distance today. And hopefully she, she improves from here. I didn't think we had, uh, you know, too many surprises in there. That we had, uh, you know, Uncle Mo, obviously, um, took some, he was a favored individual interest at, at 7 to 2. You'll get 920 on him. And there are those that uh, don't like to take that short of a price that far out. There are others that would argue, heck, you're not going to get uh, anything uh, higher than that if the horse keeps winning and he is what he is. So uh, it depends on where you stand, whether or not you think that's uh, value. Uh, I, I, I wasn't uh, that surprised that, that dialed in to end up being the, the, you know, the, the second individual choice at 8 to 1. Uh, to honor and serve was at 10. And you look at a horse like Soldat, right now, if you got down on Soldat, you got 18 to 1 on him at, uh, with a win payoff of 30. 940. If he continues to march on, you're not going to get that on, 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 on Derby Day. Three-year-olds were showcased Saturday as well with races from Santa Anita and Aqueduct. Look at the sky. Beautiful morning. 
Early bird catches the worm and that is the worm we are looking for. Six o'clock, she's out at her usual time. Zazoom, zoom. Off into the sunrise. Here she is. And there's Panichi again. Gets all the good ones. Followed by a flashing leprechaun. How are you, big boy? How did the zoo train? She looked good. She looks like your sister. Only prettier. So all systems go at the saddle barn. Zazu gets her kit off. How'd she go, Panichi? Nice. Yeah. She's ready. She's ready. ready to go. And around they go. You see, she's a ham for the camera. All I've got to do is turn this thing on, and she's all over it. <laughs> We've got the zoo over here and the Big Mac over here. Look, she's looking at Big Mac. You want to say hi to Big Mac? What do you think, Mac? You like the zoo? <laughs> Look at Zoo. She's trying to walk the dog. See that? <laughs> Leave him alone. Well, turbulent descent goes post for it in the Oaks, as I mentioned, and she's been favored in all four of her career starts. Won the Hollywood Starlet, but then second to Zazu last time out in the Las Virginis. What did you, the owners, and trainer Mike Pipey take away from the defeat? You know, there's a, there's a lot of things I can say about the race. I don't want to make too many excuses. We were giving her five pounds. She had a better trip. Uh, we told David and Paddock just to keep her out of trouble. And I, I guess being five wide in both turns doesn't help you. But uh, we got beat a length and a quarter. And, you know, She's out of a forestry mare, and we'll find out today if she really wants to be a, a route filly. Homeward bound in the Oaks now, and it's Turbulent Descent. Zazu comes to take her on. The two favourites have it to themselves. Turbulent Descent and David Flores digging deep. Zazu and Joel Rosario closing on the outside. Turbulent Descent going to get there. Turbulent Descent in a thriller. One at a head. Zazu was closing the gap with each and every stride. Well, today um, I'm not going to do the same mistake. It was no mistake last time, but I, I want to take every advantage uh, that I have. So I got, a I got a better position today, and I was just waiting patient on the turn. I, when I look back, I know she was right behind me, so I had to push the button, and she responds just nicely, and uh, she makes the shows the perfect distance today. And hopefully she, she improves from here, but uh, so far it's, she's, she's just right for today. So this is your first time aboard this horse going as the favorite in the Gotham. Have you had a chance to work the horse, or will you just get legged up for the first time today? Yes, I'll be, I'll be getting on him for the first time today. Um, I was able to ride against him in the past, and also I watched all his replays, and I'm very excited to, to be on him today since he... He should be the top horse in the race. State Thirsty's on the outside. Nacho Sane in behind horses. Then Toby's corner. Here comes Stay Thirsty. Now to take the lead. It's Stay Thirsty in front. On the outside is Toby's corner. Norman is Johnson. It's Stay Thirsty. And this will cap a big day for Ramon Dominguez and Todd Pletcher. Their third stakes win on the card as Stay Thirsty wins the Gotham. I always thought about the uh, excitement level, and it's actually 10 times more exciting than I even thought. Uh, what I didn't realize was the anxiety level that comes with this. Uh, that's 100 times worse than I thought. So uh, I couldn't be happier. Um, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to start two horses in the Derby, uh, I, would, I wouldn't buy two for any of the 18. Uh, you know, I take my two over the 18 combined any day. Real quick before we let you go, Uncle Mo to the wood, if all goes well in the timely rider. Stay thirsty, his final prep will be? Uh, you know, Todd and I spoke today. Horse, horse looks great right now. Uh, he's going to ship back to Florida, I think, on Tuesday. Um, you know, I, no guarantees, but we're not going to be afraid to point him at the Florida Derby. Going to be a great prep, honor and serve, sold at, dialed in, uh, stay thirsty. Uh, should be one of the, the best preps of the year, and uh, most likely he'll be pointed to probably the Florida Derby and give him five weeks before the Kentucky Derby. Coming up on Rewind. I used to be a great hiker in England, sometimes walking 30 or 40 miles a day. Kelvados Blues, Monterosso is still kicking. Monterosso in front, drawing to the judge, and Monterosso and Mikhail Barcelona have won the City of Gold. 
Peach Bottom in front coming down to the 16th pole, clear from Missy Minor, and it's going to be career win 1,000 for Victor LeBron. Peach Bottom does it. Down to the final furlong. It's Pioneering Native in front with a milestone on the line. It's Pioneering Native as a riding triple. Makes me Galmema the latest member of the 1,000 win club. Elliot Walden called in to first call to discuss Drosselmeyer in the Challenger Stakes. Oh, I do have a soft spot for him. It was a very special day. The, the one thing that made the Belmont special was that uh, Kenny's wife, Lisa, was the only representative from the ownership group, and, and she was on a girl's trip to New York with her daughter and her, and her sister, and, and so they stopped by Belmont, and Kenny was obligated with his sons at a basketball tournament, so she was there, and it was just really special to share that with her, but yeah, we have a special spot for him. On the outside, he is charging late, but Calizio came to run today from the barn of Todd Pletcher, going away impressively by about four. Jardim is up for second. It's a three-horse photo for third. Jeremy Edge joined race day to discuss his hike from Belmont to Saratoga, all for a great cause. He used to be a great hiker in England, sometimes walking 30 or 40 miles a day. And a friend said, uh, would you like to go up Mount Wilson? And I thought, yes. We walked the 17 miles. I came back without a blister. And really everything... Um, took off from there. You know, the walk is, is quite a ways. How are you, you going to raise money? How are you raising money over the course of this walk, Jeremy? Um, well, today um, the, the PDJF's website later today will go live with a, a full page on the walk plus a um, credit card um, donation spot. It was Super Thursday in Dubai as Maidan showcased seven feature races to set up the World Cup card. Arlene has run into a clear cut second. Bo Rugg about to go to third, but Reem is much too good and has won the Elbas de Kia handsomely. Happy Dubai's race to the front with 100 to go. Invincible Ash and Mishua Joe are running on. Happy Dubai in front, Joe will be too late and Happy Dubai does it again. Bankable storming down the centre, conveyance in front of Force Freeze, but class is telling. Bankable swoops, 50 metres out, grabs the lead, draws clear, Bankable. Mendip and Zappine Speed are coming down the outside. Mendip's coming. Astro to bowl in front. Mendip and Zappine Speed go to him. Mendip in front and wins. Calvados Blues, Monterosso is still kicking. Monterosso in front, drawing to the judge, and Monterosso and Mikhail Barcelona have won the City of Gold. Moussa is after twice over. Twice over a neck in front. Moussa is trying, but he won't catch twice over, and twice over wins the third round and wins it well. Poet's Voice, Wigmore Hall down the outside. Presbus through in the centre. Poet's Voice in front. Wigmore Hall, Presbus come to the line. Wigmore, Wigmore Hall. This has been Scott Hazelton for Big Cap Week. Now here's a look at what's coming up next week on HRTV. Big Cap Day in Arcadia, California. Big Cap and the Kural Mile still to come. Good on track crowd this afternoon, Aaron. You know, I think she got the wrong email. Big hair, not Big Cap. <laughs> big Cap Day. I love it. Like, I love it. You know what? I, I will not make fun of anyone for their hairdo. I will not do it. I would.